It was the dawn of World War II and a new era for the Corps. As the war raged overseas, another battle was being waged in America, a fight for equality in the military that began with the very first African-American recruits earning the title United States Marine. It was difficult. A lot of guys didn't make it. Quite a few didn't make it. Uh, they went back home, what we call AWOL. Um, a lot were kicked out for one reason or another. Um, but I'm a New York street kid, right? I can take anything. This training would help prepare him for the challenges to come. The Chinese came into the war, and so the big, big battle broke out. And then the winter came in, and uh, so we all got snowed in, damn near froze to death. This is only a small glimpse into the legacy of the Mockford Point Marines, a legacy that is being passed on to future generations. Well, you know, the legacy of the Mockford Point Marines is very rich. You know, these men came from all walks of life during a time of racial divide and despondency in a country that did not want them. You know, as we all know, the Marine Corps was the last branch of service to accept African Americans within the ranks. But these men came and they answered the nation call during this time of racial divide and despondency. You know, these men, you know, some were doctors, lawyers, politicians, some even served in the United States Army and relinquished their commission to be a United States Marine. You know, and they proved that patriotism is indeed colorless. You know, as I look at their accomplishment, they paved the way for thousands and thousands of not only African Americans, but Marines, period. You know, women and, and male, you know, that currently serve today and who are currently serving. The actions of these brave Marines paved the way for future individuals to earn the coveted title. Individuals like Lieutenant General Ronald Bailey, who said he would not be where he is today if not for the Marines of Mofford Point. No, I don't think uh, I would have been here without those Marines. I, I truly believe that we're standing on the shoulders of those great men and women because Annie Grimes, who later on got commissioned, came in in the latter part of that. So uh, the, the iron will that I mentioned earlier that they displayed because they were not allowed to go out in town in the, in the, in the city of Jacksonville like all the other Marines, that's a, that requires discipline. That requires discipline to, to, to not uh, fight back or create uh, these problems that will create a negative image. And so they didn't do that. They, they displayed an amount of courage that all Marines can be very proud of. Even though they were denied the basic rights and recognition of America's citizen, they still fought through it because they knew that by dedicating themselves to that, that it could make it better for some to follow. And so they made it better for me. And so there's these great Marines who we are standing on their shoulders. These men didn't ask for it. They're not asking for it to be awarded. You know, as I talked to Marple Point Marines, they will simply say, if it had to do it all over again, it would be a United States Marine. 